and keep every person in your care safe. And so I wanna thank you for that because it is always like so selfless, the actions that you are taking. And for our hospital workers, you know, you're bringing attention to our environmental and sanitation workers there as well. Because I don't even think that most people don't know that if they are ever in a situation where they need to go for, you know, God forbid, whatever reason, have surgery, etc., that the person that cleaned up that surgical room for them to go into or come out of isn't even being paid a living wage. No, they're not. Yes. No. No. That is unbelievable. Morally reprehensible. Yes. Yes. Morally yes. reprehensible. Yes. And yes. I don't want to go to a hospital that treats its sanitation workers like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't. And the thing is, is that when we talk about staffing shortages and we're seeing them, experiencing them all across the country in all sorts of sectors, right. it is always so mind boggling to me that CEOs think that the answer to staffing shortages is to keep wages low. Right. That's not gonna solve this problem. Right. What you all are asking for is going to solve the problem right. of staffing shortages by actually paying people a living wage yeah. because some of the issues that we have right now, you know, when we talk about, uh, you see all this stuff in the news and people are like, oh my gosh, there's this labor shortage. It's not a labor no. shortage, no, it's no, a dignified it's job shortage. Right. And, and, but when people are freaking out about it, they said four million people uh, haven't returned to work. First of all, remember that one week last year when 30 million people were laid off in one week, yeah. like just overnight? But we, we're talking about all these millions of people that are you know, not quote unquote re-entering the work, uh, workplace when the cost of childcare is more than what you're being oh, paid mm -hmm. hourly. Right? Yes. Yes. You, why should we go into debt to work a job? Right. That is the exact opposite right. of what this is about. And so our sanitation workers, our, our environmental care workers, just all of it, they're, it's all about caring for our community. And so I just wanna thank you all so much because if you didn't do this, more people, more people's lives would be at risk. Right. Yeah. And right. that's why you made this decision. It was, it's not just about what we have to gain individually, etc. People are not getting the health that they need. They are getting sick and they are dying because they don't have the ratios that mm -hmm. are that are consistent with human life. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the hospital administrators are going to keep saying that there's just a shortage. And they'll talk specifically about registered nurses. And the reality is there's a lot of registered nurses out there mm -hmm. that have licenses that are not practicing at the bedside because they're not going to keep doing this. Yep. Yes. Oh, These yeah. conditions, people can't keep working there. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. 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 But I think it's, it's just so important. And what also is so critical about this as well is that it, what you all are doing is that you're walking the walk. You're showing that these kinds of changes they're like, you have to do it in every lane. It's not just right. about showing up and voting on election day or anything like that. It's about how do we mobilize in our work mm -hmm. and yes. in our workplaces. Right. And you know, a union is how we do that. There is power in a union. Yes, there is. Yes. There is power yes. in a union. Yes. Yes. Sorry, are you all out there? Can you, can you hear me? I want to thank you all for, for being out here and for walking this line. We know that this choice to strike is not easy. It is not something, it's not a conclusion that we come to easily. You're doing it because you care about the people in this community and the kind of health care healthcare that they get. And poor staffing ratios means that people's lives will be at risk. That's, right. That's what this means. Yes. And so the solution to not having enough staff is to raise wages. Yes. Yes. It ain't rocket science. It's not rocket science. Um, it's oh, simple so sorry, supply Rachel. and demand. I often think it's so funny, right? We accept the law of supply and demand with everything, right? Oh, rents are going up. It's supply and demand. There's enough supply. There's a high demand. So we're, we're all our rents are going to go up. Uh, you know, cost of everything's going up. There's high supply, low demand. But when there's low supply in the labor market, 
and there's high demand, why are why are we fighting against wages going up? Right. Right. That is the cost of labor. So when there is low supply and there's high demand, that means people need to pay a damn living wage. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! Woo! We gotta raise the wage because right now people are not being paid enough to live. Right. Nope. Nope. And when you're not being paid enough to live, what is even the point of showing up yep. to work? Right. 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 It's that simple. So instead of one person making a million dollars and the actual people who are trying, who, whose job is to sanitize a surgical theater, right here, thank you so much, give it up. <laughs> more valuable than $13 an hour. Oh, yeah. Yes, it is. Yes, yes, it is. The work that you do is worth so much more than $13 an hour. That's right. It is worth the world. Mm -hmm. It is worth human life, and it is worthy of dignity. And I want to talk a little bit about what it means to make 13 bucks an hour, because I've been in a position like that, and not like for a summer, for years. When you go home and like you're scared because you don't know when you turn on the lights if they're gonna be on or not. That shame that you carry every day, but you have to stay quiet about it and show up to work every day with a smile on your face. I know it. I know it. And it's not right. And it's not fair. And what happens is that we internalize that. As much as we don't want to, we internalize it. Because you see that paycheck paycheck and you think that's what you bring to the table. You think that that's a measure of your worth. It's not. It's an inaccurate one. It's an underwhelming one. And there are people in there whose worth is overinflated. Yes. Yep. yes. 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 Absolutely. Including I will scammer. tell you, yes. 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 I will tell you, an hour. <laughs> to have two patients. Yeah. One person being paid over a million dollars in the city of Buffalo when the actual people who are sanitizing, sanitizing the surgical rooms that other people are gonna you know, be, be taken on surgery in, that, that's not right. No, it's that's not right. right. That is a misappropriation of value on both ends of that scale. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You deserve to be paid way, way, way more than $13 an hour. Yeah. You deserve your health care benefits to be protected, if not expanded. And you deserve way more than what you're getting. So I just want you to know, next time you see that paycheck, it's not a measure of your worth. And that's why we're out here today. That's right. that's we're out here. Because we gotta make the perfect path straight, and we gotta make things right. And they're not gonna make it right on their own. And in fact, they will put in everything that it takes to make sure that they keep it crooked. Yep. Yes. Everything that it takes. So I want you all to stay strong. I want folks in there that are crossing a picket line to know that that we are increasingly not going to find that okay. You know, yes. our values are in solidarity with each other. We got to stand with each other because one at one point or another, every single one of us is going to need somebody help, somebody else, every single one of us. So we're standing together today and we stand with you today, Diane, and we stand with every single person that is out here demanding not just better pay for some of our most vulnerable workers, but better staffing ratios for the patients that are in there. Because if we go in, I mean, imagine if you, for whatever reason, need to go to surgery and you are being, you know, and you're about to, to be rolled into a surgical room and that room is not properly sanitized because the person that's being paid is not being paid a living wage. So they're working long hours, two jobs, you get tired. That's, that's how mistakes are made. And that's not a fault of any one person. It's a fault of not paying a living wage. You know, when I, I have staff in DC, it's really, honestly, disgustingly common for Hill staff to be incredibly underpaid. I'm talking about people putting in 60 hours of work a week, getting paid in some offices, $25,000, $30,000 a year in Washington, DC, one of the most expensive housing markets in the country. And 
when I decided to come into office, I said, you know, it's going to take sacrifices, but I want the starting salary. I don't want a single person who works for me to make less than $52,000 a year. Good for you. I said, that's what I think is a living wage in Washington, D.C. I think you can try to get rent, especially if you're younger. If you, you know, I think you can, you can scrape by on 52K, right? If I could do more, I would. And that meant sacrifices, you know, because each member of Congress, the way it works, you get a, a set uh, MRA, an allocation. And that's for everything. Like, it's just one big budget. You buy your computers out of there. You pay your staff out of there, like all of it. And I said, okay, I don't care what it takes. It meant, you know, a little fewer staff. I don't have any unpaid interns. Every intern is paid at least $15 an hour. And I said, okay, that means less interns because I actually have to pay for them. Yeah. It's not free labor. Um, it means, okay, maybe our staff size is a little bit smaller. And maybe it means that we aren't totally overwhelming people at, the work, at, at work. But you know what? Every constituent that comes into my office feels seen and cared for. We talk about the policy that's made in, in DC. Do you want your policy made by a person who is stressed, underpaid, and working you know, all these other jobs 